All right, guys, welcome back to Starlighter Season 12. I'm Ige, going to be joining me here as Skim, and we also got Mop Packs coming to us for stats. So we just routed up everybody we could, and we're good to go. This is going to be a fun series as, you know, Pain Gaming versus Void Boys was really good. Hoping this one's going to be really close as well. Yes, two very promising teams. I think Wheel, especially, I don't know, like, these guys have been playing together for such a long time, like Sleazel, Goody. They've played together so often, and um, obviously Team Ehak, a lot of talent is in there as well, with Yavar, with MGW. So, wouldn't be surprised if this goes to yet another Game 3, but, you know, we'll see. We will see it indeed, and, uh, you know... I enjoy I enjoy MJW. I've been doing I've been enjoying a lot of Sleasel's play as well. So, oh boy, I've been I've been following Wheel Rex since they like started playing their games, and it's it's interesting to see how far they've come. And I'm excited, man. A lot of a uh, good North American talent popping up, and just a lot further they can go. I'm yeah, excited. I just hope they I just hope they stay together because I don't know, like they've had a lot of you know, different rosters already, like, I don't know, it, it started out as typical mistakes and pretty boy swag, and they sort of always, like, disband it bit by bit, and, you know, I hope they can, you know, find a roster that just is stable enough. Like Leviathan, they're in a team house now, they're they're yes. looking good, they're practicing, getting ready, and uh, they're in Florida, too, so some nice weather for them, just gotta watch out for the rainy season, but let's talk about this game, Bant's coming in, SF, Bat, Sniper and Troll, just a lot of just really big cores just out of the picture, but Wheel Wreck snag up the axe. Yeah, like SF and Sniper, one of the, like these are like two heroes that, you know, can sort of like make or break a game. SF especially can dictate the pace of the game just by himself, so you kinda of wanna take it out when you know that the enemy team has a really good SF player, so I think it's sort of like also like NA specific. You don't really want to give away SF. Not at all. So Lion picked up though, really strong pick. We saw the finger work coming out last game. Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't enough for Pain Gaming, and uh, boy, we'll see what Team Hunt can do with this. It's pretty good against the Axe. You can counter initiate if you're not the one being called, and you just get the hex out there, and you're good to go. Also, early on too, if the Lion can find his quick six, the Axe won't have as much of an HP pool as he would like, so it could make some quick work there. And then the Ventral Spirit too. Wow, Ooh. I like this from Team Hunt. Like. Like early on, securing just very solid supports, um, it does sort of like it doesn't really give them as much. I want to say wiggle room in terms of like flexible counter picks. Let's say wheel wheel rack pick up like some sort of, let's say slark, and you would have ideally picked up like some sort of disruptor against it. But it's still pretty good to just have like a solid, you know, support duo to work on. And from there on out, you can be really flexible with your cores. You don't really give away too much information on what kind of draft you're gonna run, but. Um, at the same time, Wheel also, like, they have an Axe, they have an Earthshaker, it doesn't really give away too much of their draft. Nope, and Wheel pick up the Earthshaker, so pairing that with Call, you know, you just blink it once you have that, get Echo, Fissure, you're setting yourselves up for a really nasty combo already. Uh, pair with an Enigma, why not? Black Hole, Echo Slam, not too bad, but it's going to be a good counter once you do have the line with the Blink, and Eventual Spirit, you know, is trying to get away, you just drop a Fissure and you're good to go. Good blocks early on, too, in the game can mean a... Big, big swing in momentum, so we'll see how they play this, and Store Spirit getting a band away is not too much of a surprise to me. Yeah, it's also one of these heroes that you don't really want to give away, because again, it, it's a it's some sort of like pacemaker, I want to say, because, you know, he just he just dictates, dictates games by himself, he just, you know, jumps around, kills you, and it's just unstoppable, so it's a good, it's a good hero to ban out, and... The Earthshaker and Axe, I like it as well, because early on, the Earthshaker, just because the Fisher's so long, you just give the Axe enough time to just walk in. You don't even need the Blink early on, because the Fisher is so long. You just If you trap somebody in, you can just walk in and call. So it's a good good and solid pickup. Earthshaker, uh, Earthshaker in general, very popular hero right now. Yeah, and honestly, back in Dota 1 when I played that, all I did was play Earthshaker. I think I had like something like 2,000 plus games played on Earthshaker, and it's... It was just really fun. I, I had an obsession with him for some reason. When he was a Tauren, at least, and had the uh, the totem there. So he's transitioned pretty well. He's been up and coming quite a bit. And seeing him as a, a first round priority pick, it's pretty nice. It feels good. After all the years, he's finally he's finally getting there. So bands flying through, Clockwork, Skywrath. That combination deadly in itself, but split apart in the bands. And then a puck picked up for E-Hug. Already a very solid ganking 
lineup from Ehark with just with like the Lion, the Puck, and the Venge, they can easily find like one or two or three kills. Um, then again, it sort of like depends on what sort of lineup Wheel picks up because if they pick tanky heroes, it's actually going to be quite difficult for Lion, Venge, and Puck to find them, even though they have a lot of magic damage. Um, they're all really squishy themselves as well, so there's a lot of potential for counter initiation from Wheel, and they have the right heroes for it already. Mm -hmm. Like Axe, Earthshaker are really good heroes to counter initiate with. Early calls too. If Axe finds a yeah. good six timing, he is he's ready and primed to just take them all down. And pairing that with a disruptor too, Puck, not gonna have a good time getting out of Static Storm, especially if he preemptively shifts too. And disruptor's like, all right, drop a storm right on top of you, and you can't get yeah. out. Speaking of counter initiate, like disruptor is so good at that. He sort of like uh, breaks off the formation of the enemy lineup just by glimpsing one of those heroes back. He can cage them in with a static field, and um, it's a good hero in general. Uh, to have, especially, yeah, as you mentioned, against the puck. So it's a good pickup by Wheel. Also doesn't really give away too much, although they're going to probably have a really passive early game because Disruptor and Earthshaker themselves aren't really, I want to say, the best roaming combo, per se. They're good at babysitting, but they're not really good at, like, you know, just going in for kills. Yeah, the babysitting aspect is a big thing to watch out for. Seeing as though they can set up for kills... But not as effectively as the Lion Ventral. And when you're setting yeah. up for a Juggernaut, oh god, that's that's dirty. So Team Ehark, a very aggressive lineup thus far. Curious to see what they're going to pick up as an offlaner, just because maybe they're going to keep on with their aggression, pick up in a very, like, sort of... They're just also like, squishy. They are. They definitely are. So if Wheel gets, like, some sort of big Aqua Slam and a big call, they're going to melt easily. All right. Wilrick, what do you got? What's in store? Where is your mid? Where is your safe lane core? And where's, uh, off lane? I guess the axe. Why not? He'll switch into the jungle if he gets, like, really messed up, which he should with this lion ventral combo. Uh, hmm. Mid lane, I'm feeling Queen of Pain. I'm doing it. I'm looking for an orchid carrier right now. I think Queen of Pain is too squishy here, and also like they have really good heroes against the Queen of pa uh, Queen of Pain already, with the silence from the puck and with the hex from the line. Like it's way too risky to run the Queen of Pain here. I think. Okay. Um, I think they need something more defensive. Uh, something I don't know actually. I'm currently thinking, maybe OD. OD, um, you think? Yeah, it's been a long maybe. time since I've seen an OD. Like maybe in like I think I was watching someone cast EEL or something like that and. It was Loda playing OD, and they just got, like, rolled. <laughs> but that's, like, pub stuff. But uh, I, I could see it. Still on the intel from the puck, still on the intel for the jug. Pretty good. But really? You think you think it could work? I think it could work. Um, it's a bit greedy, I suppose, just because, like, OD itself sort of... I think he still needed Midas. Um, but I think it could work. It's a bit defensive. It sort of does well against the... Uh, it definitely does well in the lane against the puck. So, I don't know. It could be but okay. it sort of depends on what we all feel comfortable with. And they're taking a long time to think about this right now, because they're late game, they have the axe, which is good, and the disruptor, if he can find himself an axe, uh, is a pretty big deal. It's disabling items too, I believe, so. Hmm, 20 seconds on the clock. What's their core going to be? What's going to fit right now? They can't go for a draw lineup, they can't go for Visage. Offlane Phoenix is something to think about, stopping the jug autos just a bit. Can snowball out of control ridiculously. Never seen an Ags in competitive play, though, for Phoenix, so I would like to see that. But Slardar, hmm, bashes, amplified damage, and sprint. As little as the crush. The crush is really nice. AoE stuns with blink, hmm. Yeah, mod, mod packs just did just drop in a few stats here, so they did. Uh, they do like that Slardar. Like, in this patch, I think he's one of their most pick heroes. With Sleasel a five. plays it, right? Yeah, I think so. And apparently they like to run an armor straight around this, so... Um, why not? They have a quite a tanky lineup. They could just go in, and they have a lot of initiation as well, counter initiation as well. So, it, why not? It can work, definitely. It can work. All right. Um, what do we got? Most picked heroes for wheel this patch. What do they got? Left in the draft are Medusa, Brewmaster, and the Slaughter, like we see picked out here. Hmm. And the armor strike. You think they're gonna pair it with Dazzle? But there's already too many supports. Put ES in offlane like uh, Zai would do. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think that's too that's too, too much. Weak. Yeah, that's okay. too much. Especially now that the Doom is being picked up. So Team Ehog feels like they have a very well-rounded draft. They have like a good early, good mid game, and if they do want to go late game, it's also not too bad, just because Doom and Jogger are still really good late game. So um, I think we'll, 
if if they go for something wanky like some sort of like Earthshaker offlane, I think that's a bit too much. Uh, I think they just should just go for something really safe mid. Meepo. Nah, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. Uh, no way. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. There's not too it many good cool North though. American Meepo players. I know there's like Ink Dota and stuff and Medusa. Okay. Damn, Modpacks dropping that knowledge. Yeah, Modpacks knows. He studies he studies these stats, man. Does it for uh, high ground and stuff. When he casts with Mott, not cast, but does stats with Mott, so it's cool. So, Wheel, they're going to play a bit more passive in the early game, I suppose. They're going to babysit the Medusa in the mid, most likely. Just going to make sure that she doesn't die too often. Farm up a very early blink on both Slada and Axe, and just play like some sort of like 4 Protect 1, where they just have like Slada and Axe just making a lot of space. That seems like the plan here, right? Yeah, that does. The only thing is, though, they have to really... Really watch out for the Doom. MJW is going to be a key, key component to uh, Team Ehug's, you know, prosperity in the late game. Because Dooming out the Medusa prior to, you know, Lincolns or anything like that just really screws her over. Lion as well can drain the mana. And uh, Eventual Spirit Swap, a big deal too. So, we're coming into it. This is going to be Game 1 between Wheel Wreck While Whistling and Team Ehug. And uh, I'm Ega. Joining me here is Skim, as well as Mott Pax on stats. So, it's going to be a fun time. First time ever having a stats person for my stream, or for my cast, excuse me. And, uh, can't wait for the knowledge bombs. But let's let's go over the, wa the rosters here real quick. Your war will be playing the Juggernaut. We got Ryuza, as well, playing the uh, Lion. Infinity on your puck. SF playing the Vengeful. And then, MJW playing the Doom for E-Hug. How about Wheelwreck? Yeah, we have Tolera on the Axe in the mid. Um, currently not positioning himself in the mid, but looks like... Actually, I don't think it's his real name. I don't recall his real you name. You say Agni. It doesn't matter. Agni. Okay, Agni on the Medusa. We have Derp Derp playing the Disruptor. Uh, it's Goody on the Earthshaker and Sleazel on the Slaughter. And as Modpax noted, most likely he is going to pick up that Midas on the Slaughter, which he does very so often. And I think it's a good pickup as well. Like, Slaughter... It's sort of like this... You kind of want to gank with him, but at the same time, you also want to get a bit of form. I think the Midas is really good on him just because you still get a very early blink sort of and um you know it's sort of like slot is really bad here to farm with the field so sort of like a really that. bad one not a really bad one but if uh, he's not really like some sort of flash farmer like he doesn't really have an innate ability to just like you know clear okay. camps or something okay i mean he can with the crushes but you're right it takes too much mana it takes too much time and uh the battle for the runes looks like we're gonna have a one one split Agni will take this one for the Medusa mid, and Yawar will take it for the Juggernaut, respectively. And Yawar, he went for Stout Shield Ring and Tangos. That's that's something I'm not used to seeing, actually, on Jugs. At least going safe lane. Hmm. Yeah, quite curious why that is, because he's going to have two supports babysit him as well. Not sure he needed to go for the ring. I guess um, straight uh, Aquila, and then... Mm, I don't see him going for, like, Portman's Shield. Uh, right. I don't know, I don't I don't like Aquila on Oh my god that damage. Derp derp is he dead? I think he's Auto? Dead. Auto he's he's dead? What? <laughs> Infinity. He's he's gonna get this kill and he's gonna get away with it. What a player. What was Derp Derp he was trying to zone him out with the uh, yeah. Thunderstrike, but he took damage from the tower and took damage from Infinity, who was hitting him for I believe it said seventy nine. So that's a little insane that uh that just happened for Derp Derp. So a good start for E Hug. <laughs> Yeah, really good side. It just immediately gave Infinity the bottle. Like, he was even, like... Oh, actually, no, he didn't... Oh, I thought he was sending out the bottle. Okay, he has self. But still, like, he's only 150 away from his bottle, so... Uh, this is not the start you were hoping for, you know? You, you kind of want to zone out the enemy mid so he doesn't actually get farm at all, but... He's doing well. Well, he's doing okay. And, you know, in these other lanes going on here, MJW is soaking up some, uh, some farm. He's also... Got himself a troll, uh, Dark Priestess or whatever for the net, and he'll be he'll be looking good with that. If anything, he can use that to when he's get run when he gets run down. Excuse me. His mana pool is pretty terrible though. That, that's the one unfortunate thing about early game Doom. He's he's got enough just to like devour and then sit back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, luckily, Derp Derp did find his uh, Observer Worth or so. MJW is gonna feel a bit less safe here in the lane, and Derp Derp he's hopefully gonna interrupt this pole. Yeah. Okay. And not eating okay. the tomato either, unfortunately. Yeah. He, he, I think he wants to keep the net, or just in general, like, the, the raise of the dead, because with this, he can actually farm the jungle a lot easier. Oh, nice deny by Ryuza! Stopping Talera from getting a DD rune, just over the uh, cliff by the medium camp. Damn. But then again, like, what's the axe gonna do with a DD rune? Yeah, this lane, right? just fun looking anyway. Yeah. 
That's true. And Ax Ooh, they have vision over him. He has to be careful with this. Oh, okay. But I like that he goes for the early point in battle hunger. Hex? No jug? Are these supports gonna be able to take him out? No. Okay. Yeah. And uh, taking that early point in battle hunger too. Not going for call or anything like that. Gonna be able to get the slow, get some good periodic damage, and uh, I kind of like that. I like I like an early point into uh, battle hunger. Seeing it a little bit more often lately in the competitive scene, at least. I like it as well, but at the same time, like if he has stop clarity. Yeah, if he has to rotate back into the jungle, it's gonna be really useless. Um, and ideally, if you go, if you have to go back to the jungle, you wanna have spin and call just to tank up, you know, and deal more damage. But this is if he if he gets forced out of the lane, it's a wasted point. But since he doesn't get forced out of the lane, it's okay. Okay. And uh, let's see. Next set of runes, Affinity definitely wants his. Uh, Agni hasn't picked up his bottle just yet. Okay, just came to him on the courier. He's setting up pretty nicely, and uh, I believe MJW, he is doing a bit of the jungling, but he's so low on health, he needs to get his uh, Tranquils before he heads back in. And uh, what's this? Sleasel is currently 5-0, and oh, this patch with Slardar. And uh, the build is Midas Blink BKB. Alright, some people can learn how to play Slardar now. Albeit it's hard. <laughs> I think it's a cool hero to watch, like it's... It's in general a cool hero as well. Um, it's just, it's just in, in an awkward place sometimes because again you kind of want farm in him, but it's not really your classic carry. But if you build a strat around him, he gets really strong and he's really potent. Uh, I think Nip is probably the one team that sort of like established him in the scene by running like mass minus armor and just showing how strong he can be on that core position or even like some sort of like offline botch oh, slaughter. I don't know. Okay, never mind. They just wanted to get the rune from him. He's he's really struggling here. At least he's found level three, and has one point in call and everything. Go for a one 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 spread. But like you said, going into the jungle with this isn't the best. Yeah. Now now that he got forced out of lane, this is gonna bite him in the ass. This one point in battle hunger, it's so useless, and it actually hurts his jungling a lot. And if you look at the jungle, there's like one camp stack for him, so that's actually not even too great. So he's gonna have a rough time, and I think he should have transitioned into the jungle earlier. I think he tried to be too greedy to stay in the lane, and I mean he did get a level three out of it, but he didn't really f like force, like uh, hurt the enemy supports too much. Look at them; they're also level three, so yeah, um, they don't mind at all. Some damage up here to the tier one as well. So he's still Fantasy on and Derp Derp. Putting in some good work here against MJW on this Doom. And uh, he hasn't really given into this lane just yet. He's also summoning some of those little <laughs> skeleton warriors. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to give those up to uh, Sleasel Farm, but you know, they helped out with him last sitting just a bit. And like you said, the axe is in the jungle now, just farming up a bit. This is actually great awareness from MJW. Like, he went into the jungle, farmed a bit there, and as soon as he realized that. Uh, Real was pushing the lane, he immediately came back and soaked up all the XP. So he made basically the most out of this lane, unlike the unlike the axe. So look at this. He's safe. Well, he gets at five getting... minutes, wow. Oh, that's nice. But yeah, look at this uh, look at this doom. He's even uh, farming on this lane, which he shouldn't be. And he's gonna interrupt the pole. Actually there's not even gonna be a double pole, so this lane is gonna push again and he's gonna get another wave of free XP. Or two waves I should say. And with this, well, I guess, yeah, you could say that Ehag is definitely getting the most of the, or the better trade here in this early game. Some pull stacking of the Ancient gonna come out here from the side of Ehag. Do they get it? They should. Yep, nice. There is a good ward here from the uh, Dire side from Wheel, so they're spotting out these rotations from the supports and should know that that's getting stacked. A haste rune was activated by Medusa. She picked that up after uh, forcing Infinity off of it. Oh, he missed the shift too. Oh, that sucks. Oh, and... Oh, nice. Nice coil. Okay. It's gonna prevent him from getting the from getting the rune, which is actually quite huge. Um, nice awareness from the EHAC supports. They they noticed that the Medusa was trying to go top, and then she, you know, went back as soon as she saw the enemies. So they know that they have a ward there, and that knowledge can actually, you know, make or break an initiation or a fight. And uh, let's see, how's Bot doing right now? You are forward with Storm. He's the he's the brother of a uh, Sumail, right? Yes, he yeah, is. Cool. I don't. I, I, you gotta think like being known as that guy. Just like, yeah, I'm his brother. Whatever. That's like all he's known for. But he's he's been making a big, a big fuss in the scene. So it's not too bad here. And yeah, I think he's definitely making a name for himself. Like I think a lot of people already know that. Like, oh, he's Yawar. Like, sure, he's the brother of Sumail, but it's not really like this sort of like you know people know his name at least. Mm -hmm. He's got his Aquila and Phase boots, so he's farming up pretty well. He'll be making his way to the Mask of Madness fairly soon. 
if he doesn't go for Mask of Madness, I guess rushing Ags, why not? <laughs> but Mask of Madness is pretty much the staple build for Juggernaut players still to this day, despite yeah, all the it's, nerfs and buffs. <laughs> it's too good, honestly, but he may consider otherwise because with the minus armor coming out from the slaughter, it's gonna hit, he's gonna hit like a truck, and it's gonna hurt even more. So I don't know, like in general, sure, it's it's definitely the item to go for because it amplifies your damage from the ultimate so much. But um, I don't know. It may be something you want to reconsider when you see, oh, there's going to be minus armor. Maybe I don't want to give him even more, you know. Oh, Infinity. He's hunting. He wants to get this kill on Solera. He's got his <sighs> coil up. Talera, goodbye, friend. And he wants to leave with silence. No, okay, goes coil. And orb for the kill. Oh, there it is. <sighs> well if you have seen that career. Oh, uh -oh. careful. Keep the derp. Coming in. He's got. Glimpse. Infinity just turns around and right clicks him though. He's like, you want another piece of meat, Chop? He throws out the Glimpse. He's gonna get put back into the Medusa though. The orb comes in. He gets fissured as well. Can he go in? Yes, he can. Still chasing on a Derp Derp. Auto attacks come in. Kinetic field drop. And Infinity in a terrible position right now. He's got some backup coming in in SF. He goes between the tier two. And he should be able to make it out through the secret shop. What's SF doing though? He's got Ryuza here with haste. Actually just timed out. They get fissured up both of them. Had a Mystic Snake gone through, that would have been a ton of damage, but Infinity gets out, Secret Agent style, and uh, gets back to base. Well played. Derp Derp had to be like, oh god, I've seen this movie before. Please, <laughs> Not again! Please don't. Not again. <laughs> but yeah, that was some really nice rotation from Infinity. And again, this just go, goes back to when he Dream Coiled the Medusa in order to prevent him from getting the rune. Um, he got the Invis rune bottom, and with this he got a kill. So, in the end, this... This one little play actually uh -oh. made Sleasel. a huge difference. Might be his first death. A three-man slither and Crush comes out though and he pops the sprint and just gets out. What a player. Damn. Uh, didn't even get his Omni Slash off the poor, poor Juggernaut. And with this, Sleasel gets away. Can even use his Midas. Please use your Midas. Yeah, of course he's, he's going to. He's yeah, a smart player. He's gonna eat. Get that yeah. nice big Minotaur, or Centaur, excuse me. Uh, is, is Iha gonna get a tower out of this? I don't know, tower's full HP. If they rotate one or two heroes up there, they can definitely defend it. They can try, they have Glyph. They're they're looking ready and prize, uh, poised to do it, excuse me. Uh, can they do it though? Let's see. We got two hard hitters going here. They pop the healing ward as well. And uh, they'll start chipping away. They don't have any supports in the back line, so they really need to be careful with this. Yeah, they need Earthshaker here. Like, Sprint comes out. To be here. Okay, you are. Phase boots, amplify damage, and he's out. He's gone. Minus 7 armor. Level 1. Ugh. Oh, wait, no, it's minus 10 armor. Excuse me. Was it minus 10, 15, and 20? Oh, God. Yes. Oh, that's a lot of minus armor. Ooh, Tolera finds himself in Lion. Wait, he's where's Tolera? Okay. Can he get this? Chop it away. He's still at six. He should be able to get it. Battle hunger okay. and chop. There we go. <laughs> nice. But at what oh, cost? Fisher coming in. TP out. Do we have a swap? No, we do not. But the magic, magic missile comes in. The orb coming through as well. And MJW tasting him down. Yep. And Infinity gets the killings. He's got all the kills for his team right now. Doing pretty well on this puck. 2K gold too. I'm not sure if he could have gotten away if he ran because he was coiled, but at the same time he should have known that he was never going to get away if he TPs because... He could have thought I'd been lucky like two seconds TP or something, but... Yeah. Not enough on the Fissure stud, unfortunately, but... Uh, they respawn back, losing the line for the Axe. That's that's a trade they'll take. For yeah, sure. this just puts the Axe further behind. Like, sure, he got a kill on the line, but... You know, dying in return is not that great, and he's still 1k away from his blink. Like, that one pug rotation is honestly so huge just because it sets him back so much. And Sleasel, he's got his blink dagger when he's ready to pick it up. So 2300 gold in the bank, you can join it with the uh, dagger of puck, and uh, see who can get the better initiation here. MJW getting amplified up, and they just kind of just kind of back off for a little bit. Giving each other the space, Sleasel picks up the blink. I don't think he wants to show it just yet, but there yeah, should be an idea that he has it. I think he wants to immediately get a kill as soon as he has it. Like, now that he has it, I think he wants to get a kill in this Doom. Now, honestly, if you're Infinity, yeah, he's going up top. I would, I would have said, as soon as you pick up your Blink on a Puck, you should probably, like, smoke up and try to get a kill. Because they were playing really aggressive up there. They want to get a tower. With a Blink on the Puck, you can surprise him and counter-initiate him. Oh, he's actually going... Whoa, oh, that's, he's so ballsy right now. What is he doing? <laughs> so risky. Dude, it's, dude, it's NA Dota, like... Are you that surprised? No, not really. I just like acting surprised, yeah. though. It's always fun. Yeah. But yeah, Infinity, I don't know. I, he he revealed his blink just like that. I guess it's so not that. So does Sleasel, though. Yeah, that's true. What does Ehug have here? Overall, win rate this patch is 38%. Ouch. 50% win rate with Jug. 
54 with Venge, and 57. So they have good win rates for these heroes, but... So technically they should win? I mean, with all three of them in, that puts them at, what, 150 plus percent chance? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's not how math works. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just messing with you, but uh, Yawar gets some free time and finds a tier 1 down bot. Well, this is also really good. Like, nobody was even defending that, and... I like this really deep ward from the bench. Uh, now, if they want to do go for like if they want to go for tier two push, they see all the rotation coming in. Uh oh. TP already. Who's that? Oh, they may even go for this kill. Come on, Tlera. Oh, the spikes from max range. Omni slash dropped as well. Not enough time for this TP to come in from the Medusa, and uh, they just get out. Well played. Well executed by Ehug. Very clean kill, and once again, this this axe. He just he just wants to blink, you know. Like, this is one of the blink. slowest blink daggers, actually. Usually we see them at like 10 minutes, but we got Phantasoyon getting jumped on here. He actually shifts and drops Coil to stop the Fissure. What a player! Infinity coming in. The Doom as well dropped. MJW so fast. Zooming around there with that Scorched Earth. Sleasel. Can they find this kill? Infinity has the haste. Gonna drop these little puck right clicks into him right now. He gets clips back! The Doom is gonna take him down! What a player! Setting up the kill. Getting it. The pause comes in. The BM. American Dota. I'm just kidding. Medusa DC'd, but... Uh, well played, setting that one up. Infinity guaranteeing that kill for MJW. Infinity, what a player. Like, he's <laughs> definitely currently the MVP of EHOG. He's just creating so much space. He's such a nuisance. And he's just, you know, making sure that wheel, they all have to, like, focus him. Like, you know, <laughs> Infinity's making the moves. They sort of have to react, but they can't even kill him. They can just sort of, I guess, delay kills. Like, look at the slaughter. He's definitely going to die. Yeah, there's there's no way he's not dead here. Uh, can't even use a stick. He doesn't even have a stick. But uh, I mean, he didn't use his hand in Midas. That's the big thing. That's 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 Ooh. what really hurts. Honestly, in that position, I'm gonna I usually cry myself to sleep because like he's gonna be dead for what like 30 seconds, 25, 30 seconds probably. So that's like 30 seconds he doesn't get his get to use his hands in Midas. Like ah, oh, so annoying. <laughs> so let's see him tick away. And, oh, wait, what? <laughs> it's one tick, he lives with eight health. Mott packs, you're correct. And he gets to use his hand of Midas. So we're wrong. Oh, we're I th wrong. thought he was dead. I thought he was dead for sure. Well, that value build of strength, right? <laughs> I guess so, man. Woo, keeping him alive just barely. He picks up some TP scrolls, and he's good to go to get back into this lane. And that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And I'm actually going to take everything I just said back about Affinity. Thought he set up a kill? Nope, he was wrong. Misjudged it. The glimpse from Derp Derp saving the day. I guess it's now time to flame Infinity for not getting that kill. Yeah, can we can we ban him from uh, all NA Dota? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, Infinity picks up a region rune, so he could just go back in, you know. Um, wonder what item he's going to go for. Probably going to go for something Yules? like a uh, Yules, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's, he's got a really good start. He may even go for something like a Midas. I don't know. Um, because, I mean, they're not going to finish the game anytime soon anyway, so nope. might as well still go for the Midas. He has had a really good start, so he should have it like pretty soon if he wants to go for it. And that's a really good timing for Midas after Blink and after Treads. So, why not? You think you think the Midas would be good here? Uh-oh, Blink and Forward. Oh. Did he steal that from Talera? I didn't. I actually didn't notice if he stole the whole camp, unfortunately. I think he's still part of it. Oh, okay. Again, this axe is so sad. Just 200 gold, please. <laughs> He's so close. This is one of the slowest, actually, I've seen in terms of blink daggers this past, uh, well, at least from the games I've casted and watched. Uh, yeah. What do we got here for Ryuza? They're letting him farm up a little bit in the soul lane, and he's uh, he's getting closer and closer to his blink dagger. Yeah. The fact that Iha can basically farm up on all of the heroes is just because this axe doesn't have a blink yet. Well, like, again, this one rotation from Puck, or all, all the rotations from Puck, made sure that this Axe felt so pressured that he only got, like, a 15-minute uh, blink, even though he was in the jungle, so... Uh, yeah, this... Ehag is currently getting the most out of the map. I like it a lot. They're farming on every hero, almost. And they're not applying too much pressure, but I think they're going to wait on a crucial on a few crucial items. And looks like Infinity is going for that Yolt. He wants this kill. Minus. He wants it so bad. Yeah, but luckily they have a word, like... We all they know that it's, oh, it's coming. There it is. Glimpse back. Can he get it? Yawar's here too, but doop, chop. There it is. Oh, the creeps got the kill. Oh, never mind. They had a ward. They should have known that that was coming. Like, You know, I think it was a trust a trust exercise there. He's like, I got you with the glimpse ban. Are, are you sure? All right, I'm going to keep farming. And then he just died. <laughs> it honestly felt like that because the disruptor was just sitting right next Ooh. to him. And 
Oh, mid. SF just getting destroyed there. Sleasel with the sprint still activated. Will he get away this time, though? He jukes the orb, gets hit by the silence. There's a great static storm with kinetic field, keeping Infinity stuck in there. And uh, as soon as he comes out, Talera misses the call. Great shift from Infinity, and they're chasing it out here. Blink, Echo Slam, Fissure, Phantasoyon gets the kill. How's Sleasel doing? He gets away with 20 health this time. Again, the spell to strength saved him twice. <sighs> well, 13 HP this time. All right. <laughs> what a player. Like, he, he was even pinging for someone to deny him. Like, he was like, guys, Kill please me. deny. <laughs> so, oh. oh, did this, oh, this doesn't see it? Really? Oh, it's so close. It's like on its earlobe. This sentry ward. Oh, so close. Oh, Doom picks up a blink dagger. Much needed blink dagger as well. This um, is the game of blink daggers. How many are on the field right now? We got one, two, three. Four and five. Cool. Yeah. Oh, six Mine. actually with the uh, Ryuzas. Aren't you miscalculating? I don't... Oh, no, no, no. I didn't know. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I can actually... count. I can't do math, but I can count. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> looks like Sleasel and Axe are going to uh, go for a kill here. All right. Can they get this kill? Will they get it? Who knows? Roshan being pinged out. They're scared. Wave of Terror thrown in. It's uh, just a little bit of a scout. So for now, you know, I haven't even talked about Agni at all. He's keeping up with Yawar's farm. He's also got his Yasha. He'll have his Manta very soon. And then, uh, you know, late game Medusa still is a very viable threat in this patch. Like, Terrorblade may be gone. We don't see much Naga anymore, but Medusa, she still reigns, reigns supreme as one of the queen carries. Yeah, I think Agni's movement around the map has been really, really good. Like, he was never really in a position where he could could have gotten picked off quite easily. If anything, they would have had to invade the jungle to find a kill on him. But they always like sort of like made like every time either support was in front of him or it was the axe. So um, his movement was really nice, and he's been untouched this game. And he's gonna have a manta really soon. And yeah, like his his team is honestly creating a lot of space for him while still keeping up sort of with farm. Like look at Sleasel, he's farming quite nicely for himself as well. Yeah. They're both just behind where you are, but it's so hard to keep up with the Juggernaut once he gets the mask. And uh, he's got his Yasha now, too, so he's working his way up towards that Manta. And once he gets that, Pushing Galore should be coming out from him. I mean, he's just farming the jungle in this safe lane. And, like, he has not been disturbed at all. He's 0 0 and 2, and he's content. Level 12, level 2 Omni Slash, and he's ready to go. He can, he can do Rosh very soon. Yeah, um, I think they before they want to, before they do that they want to sort of at least get at least either the tier one mid or one or two kills because it's still very risky to go for Roche when you're facing up against like an Earthshaker and a Slada. And... Oh goodbye, Earthshaker, yeah, finger and did. dead. They milk the cow, and uh, unfortunately he died to creeps again. <laughs> oh, top lane, they want to deny this tower. They got, no, oh, Agni got it, but Blinky forward, Sleasel getting the amp damage. Look at all this work being put in, they swap him back, but the creeps finish him off. The creeps are just MVP this game. Even with Agni being doomed up here, Infinity going forward, gonna get the jaunt out, he gets amplified up, and they just want to turn. Sleasel ready to go, SF there though. Infinity has another haste rune, can he get this kill? Sleasel and him just running at max speed, man. Uh, just kind of jockeying for the positioning and seeing who wants to bite the, uh, the bait first. It was a good jump from the Doom, but... Also a very good counter initiation from Sleasel. Uh, as I said in the draft, like they have so much counter initiation, and if ha if there had been like some sort of like disruptor there or something, they would have easily gotten the kill on the puck as well. So, um, yeah, again, this Medusa remains untouched. So, what does Sleasel get next? Does he, does he go for like AC? Does he get uh, BKB? What's uh, what's think, his standard build? I think build? Mod said that his standard build is. Uh, Final soy on set again. BKB. And swap. All right, someone got the kill this time. Magic missile for SF. Oh, Goody, not in a good position. I think he's playing a bit too greedy. Like, he has his blink already. He doesn't need to be in that position. They didn't have any vision whatsoever in the mid lane, so, like, there's no need for him to be there. You know, I kind of feel his pain, though, as Earthshaker. You're just like, I, I can fissure the wave and just, you know, just blink out. But then, you know, Puck comes in and just, uh. Yeah, that's true. Just messes you up. Puck, by the way, does have his Yolts now, I think. Yeah, should have it now. Yeah, yep. it's coming to him. It's coming. So that's gonna be really good. Gonna disable all those blinks, those pesky pesky blinks. Venge puts up a very nice ward in the mid and gets immediately dewarded because there ha has been a sentry there before. So, ah, oh, that was unfortunate. 
And uh, this is a little bit of a slower game, but you know, eventually, you know, everything's gonna erupt once Medusa feels comfortable. It's going for the fight. We'll see stone gazes take effect. We'll see blink calls and blink echoes because this this blink centric team sets up really well for Static Storm. Like if there's a multi man crush, multi man fissure, just dropping a Static Storm on top, and that fight is gonna go wheels favor in just about an instant. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's kind of like too bad for wheels that this is such a slow paced game because. Um, I think with their lineup, they definitely wanted to do a lot more in the mid game. But just the fact that Infinity slowed down this axe so much, um, also slowed down, you know, the sort of mid game progression from this team. So uh, they're just content with just farming up and trying to react to an Ehux, you know, aggression. And I guess it's still okay, but you know, as an axe, as a slaughter, you kind of want to go for kills yourself because you obviously have the potential. Technically, they could kill everybody, but well, they don't. Instead, they're going to go for Roche, it seems. Mm hmm. Interesting. Will they be able to get it though is the question. Also, I think it would have been good get if they just Roshan. sat in the Roche pit and waited for the enemies to come because if you're Ehug, you kind of have to know that they're going for Roche just with this lineup and Here the fact comes that nobody's the scout. playing anymore. Here's yes. the orb. Does connect, does quite a bit of damage. Derp Derp is low, Sleasel is low, and now it's time. Doom! Actually, it doesn't get dropped. Stone Gaze out, the Hex is out. Blink Call, Echo Slam onto two. Swapping out as SF, though, but the damage goes down. Sleasel's dead. They're looking for more. Agni, though, doing quite a bit of damage here on the Medusa. It's a two for two trade. Blinking out, Infinity does get out, drops the Yules. MJW full health. Roshan not anywhere low, so don't want to commit from the wheel side. And oh, you Warbot back? What? Ooh, what a close TP, too, from Derp Derp. Yeah, I think he walked back just because he doesn't want to give away Roche. And I think this is honestly smart because I think they can go for Roche themselves. Uh, but if they do go for Roche, they're going to force out probably a buyback from the slot as well. So we'll see. I mean, he's got Omni Slash. He's ready to go. A little bit of a fissure annoyance, but won't stop them from getting those right clicks. And look how fast oh. it melts. That's a oh. Battle Fury Mask of Madness. Look at these crits. Never mind. No buyback needed. Um, but yeah, that fight was still pretty good for... Uh, Wields and as you as you pointed out before, like as soon as they got like a multi multi hero crush, that was like the static storm to follow it up, and it's actually detrimental against Ehug's lineup to get silenced by that storm. No spin, uh, can, no omni, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Well, luckily Yawar got his omni slash before the storm, so he wasn't actually affected by it at all. I don't all, think he omni at all. He still had it when he uh, bought back. I'm pretty sure he did. I don't know. <laughs> does well, buying actually, back well, refresh no, your ultimate? No, I don't think it no, does. No, no, no. It's like yeah. Uh oh, Agni, he's dead. Oh, they stopped the TP back as well. He has the uh, Lincoln Sphere, but it doesn't matter. Just chopping right through him again. You are. They cancel it with the Yules, I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely looked like he had the Omni last fight. I don't know. Hmm. It's pretty oh, well. weird. So they get the kill. They get the Aegis. They pick up a huge one on Medusa. And uh, now they're leading 11 to 6. I'm going to look at the graph real quick. Let's see the net worth. 4K plus for E-Hug. XP-wise at 15,000. Not too bad. And pushing it to your 2. Jagger went back for a Battle Fury. Interesting. I haven't seen that one in a while. Yeah. Usually they finish the Manta, maybe Scotty, or whatever else they felt like going for next, maybe a Basher. But Tier 2 going down. We did end up seeing uh, the Ventral Spirit dying. Unfortunately, I missed it, but either way, trading it out for a Tier 2 is not too bad for E-Hug. Yep. And they take control over the enemy jungle. I mean, they sort of... I don't want to say lose control over their own jungle, but uh, Wheel is doing the right thing just by, you know, farming the enemy jungle oh, because they know that's the safest place right now. He, he wanted to blink into that wave so badly, you could see. Yeah. He held he held so long, though, that ward spotting them, that was a... I guess a godsend for him. <laughs> and he, has, he has to play very safe, though. They need his Fisher and, the, and Echo in the team fight. Are they just going to lose another tier 2? Huh? Are they just going to lose another tier 2? They can't defend this? They have to, I think. Yeah, they're TPing back already, so they have to defend this. Um, it's too much like map control they're losing when they leave this tier 2. It's also too much gold, and I mean, they're in a good position to fight. They have a few good items up, um, free cru crucial items up as well, so why not take the fight if they can? All right, Fantasion, he is. Smoked up with Talera here. Prepping himself a totem. I think they know MJW's here with that ward. Yeah, they do. Echo Slam committed. Taunt's coming out as well. Fissure and a chop. He's gone. Goodbye, friend. Fantasoya trying to TP Whoa. out. Ryuza, can he get the spikes? No, he doesn't do it in time. They do end up stopping Talera. Oh, he misses the coil, though. Talera stuck on the ledge. He's dead. Blocked it. He actually just walks right through them. Never mind. Swift chop still through the taunt, and Yuar gets the kill. Goody just killed both of them. Oh, well, he killed the axe just by dropping a really bad fissure because he blocked them off. Like, he blocked the exit. The thing um, is, though, Infinity missed his coil because of that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
Um, but still, like, usually when you get a kill with a calling blade, you can just run away, you know? That's that's the beauty of that old bit. Oh, he was even pinging it out. Somebody rage pinged it. So some good aggressive wards coming in from Wheel, using them to their advantage. Gonna see some counter wards come in, though, from the side of uh, Ehel again. They don't want that to happen again. MJW does not want to die again. He's still very close to his BKB. Once he has that, he's going to be running through this lineup like it's nothing. Oh, a gem from Goody. Um, guess they want to get more map control with this gem. You think? It's a good pick up. There's not yeah, too many wards good. from E-Hug. Actually, there's none. Uh, there's sentries. Yeah, can't, but... can't really know it, though. Like you, you have to assume they have wards out, right? Of course, of course. And now Venge even dropped one. Uh, very aggressively on the top uh, on the bottom lane, so yep. But well, they can't really go out to even counter ward, so it's technically useless for now. Okay, so smoked up, ready to go, ready to fight. How are they gonna approach breaking the high grounds? Leave your war in the charge. How much time does this Aegis have left? Unfortunately, I haven't seen a timer for it yet, and they gotta know at some point they're gonna look to pressure it out. Maybe just finish off the last tier two. Talera TPing out though, spinning through the TP2 to clear out the wave, and he finishes his BKB. Big pick up there. Yep, much needed as well. Um, they could maybe go for a smoke themselves. Yeah, they have a smoke on the Korea, or now on Earthshaker, so I think they should go for a smoke. Oh, 40 seconds left. So this could be a pristine timing for their smoke, and they also leave the gem on the base? No? Okay, Drifter Drip picks it up. I think they're smoke. taking too much time trying to smoke here. Like, they're too indecisive. They're wasting too much time. Now they don't smoke at all, and... Oh. Now they pause? <laughs> they seem to be... I don't know. I think they're not really sure what to do. Feels like they're a bit confused. Like, do we smoke? If we do smoke, where do we smoke? Um, they're not in the greatest position to smoke because their own jungle is pretty dark. For all they know, they could be in their own jungle. Um, I guess they have a really aggressive nice ward that sees two heroes, but still. <laughs> Alright, so. It, it's gonna be gone either way. He's almost got his Scotty built up too. Didn't even go for the Manta, just kinda sat out in the Yasha. And BKB picked up for MJW too. So, yeah. They're, they're looking ready and able to fight. They just don't want to get me caught out by these blink initiations. That's that's the only thing that can really screw over E-Hug right now. Yep. Um, but they're in a really good position, like, they're oh, making sure that... Boots off of that uh, fight. He doesn't have Tranquils anymore. Huh. Who? Doom. When they uh, jumped him, they killed his boots oh. too. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Poor fella. Alright, Infinity's invisible right now. He wants to go in. He doesn't know they have a gem yet, yet though. So depending on who he finds... Oh, this could be huge if they do find him, but... No, oh, but... Oh, Derp Derp's here. Derp here. You see him? Oh, immediate silence. Echo Slam coming through as well. They drop the... Doom, there's a nice two-man spike coming on. MJW gets stunned up, though, by the Stone Gaze. As the Coil comes in and the response, the Omni Slash just tearing through them. You are going to town. We got a Kinetic Field to keep him trapped in there, but he just spin through it anyway. And that's a quick two for one. And a Glimpse back, maybe two for two. Oh, you are. Amplified damage swap back, though, to counter out the Glimpse. We got a Blanket from Infinity silencing them up. Sleeso just going to chase down his main man, and you are. Can he kill off the ward, though? Yes, he can. And Infinity, will you go down? Puck, just a sneaky little fairy dragon, covering where he could blink. And, oh, blinks out the crush. Salisil can't find him, and Infinity makes it out. It was really good initiation from uh, from Wheel, but unfortunately, as you can see, they, they can kite Salisil so easily. Like, just they just run away from him, or, like, yolts him, swap somebody out. It's so annoying, and honestly, Wheel are going to be really disappointed because they should have gotten more out of this. They got the, such a good start. They took out the Doom pretty early. The Doom he used was... I don't want to say wasted, but it was pretty useless. Um, this is pretty much the best fight that we could have hoped for, and he got one kill out of it. And this war, too. Very aggressive. Uh-oh. Wait, SF? He's got to be careful. Sleasel? Oh, swap. Wait, what? <laughs> All right. No, Ryo's is here. And again, Sleasel just, you know, sprints away as a frog. He's good to go. Yeah, but that one really good ward on the, bot uh, on the bottom lane, like, behind the tier 2, they know that support was coming in, so they didn't die for that kill. Would have been really risky anyway, because Sleasel himself is rather tanky this, with that BKB as well. Look at this, man. Fantasoy on Solera exposed, and do we see this tier 2 going down? Yuar is going to do what he can. He's got the ward too. Blinking forward, Ryoza is going to find Fantasoy on. Infinity coming in too. Fan is dead, and uh, 
Losing the Earthshaker is a pretty big deal. That's a lot of their control. Yeah, and yeah. Th this just one ward. Honestly, they should have been able to deward it, but oh, mid lane, they kill the Venge. Okay, they kill off the Vengeful Spirit. Popping the BKB, Sleasel's able to get out of the coil. Ryze is here now. He's got to be very careful. Amplified up. Gonna hit by the crush, and look at this damage just chopping through him. No problem. Double kill for Sleasel. Derp, derp. Oh, he's able to TP out just in time again. Pretty, I don't want to say, it. like, it's not it's not necessarily a mistake, but obviously, like, this disruptor really well played, just sent the puck back immediately, so left the line completely by himself, and that uh, was a pretty nice play from both of them. Kind of, like, diffused the whole situation where they got the kill on bottom lane, and in return they got two kills, and sort of took out the aggression that Iha could have put on. Uh, and Wheel? Need more aggression, they need more. They gotta kill Yawar, but it's it's looking very impossible to kill him right now. He's finished a Scotty, he's almost got his Manta. Aghanim is picked up by the uh, Puck is a pretty big deal. Now the BKBs, it doesn't matter. You break it, you're gonna be stunned, but Sleasel jumping on top of him. Amplifying the damage, he needs a Bash, but he gets Yules up. He should be able to chase with the Sprint, but doesn't want to risk it, and there's a Blink too in for, for Infinity. That Ward putting in some good work. Yeah. Really unfortunate. If he had just gotten one bash off, no. doomed, yeah. omni slash, silent, stun, fingered. Jesus, this Medusa stood no chance. That was a really important kill. I mean, Medusa does have buyback, but I think if you're Ehawk, you just want to force it out as much as possible. Uh, unfortunately for Wheel, Roche is not up now because it's a pretty long cooldown. Um, if it had been an early respawn, they would have taken Roche and possibly pushed in now. Now they just. You know, you're in an awkward spot, you could technically push in, but also you don't really have ages, so you don't really want to, and you're not in a good position, so, um, yeah. Pretty fortunate for Wheel, because this could have turned ugly. Yeah, a minute left on Roshan as well, and uh, we're going to be in for some fun Roshan fights. What have, what have you been building, Medusa? She's going for her Manta, she's got her Lincolns, but she's very far off from a Scotty or anything that's going to have a significant impact on her damage. Yeah, ideally, as a Medusa, you want the Scotty to hit like a truck, but right now it's like she's sort of tanky, she sort of hits okay, but she's like in that transition to becoming the real carry. So, uh, if it really depends on how how strong Ehug is right now, because if they turn up the aggression again and make sure that she doesn't get these important items before they at least take, I don't know, like the next objective, uh, it's gonna be a bit troublesome. Uh, oh, what? She didn't go for the meta. She went for the Scotty. Oh, why not? Was, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 good. It's really good. Like she doesn't need the the meta. The Scotty's gonna make her so much stronger. Yeah, what good is it gonna and, do? Just you have the uh, Manta when you're just hexed up anyway. So. Yeah. Searching with the smoke, looking to find a free kill. They're gonna go all the way through the secret shop and not find anything. Everybody from the side of E Hug is going towards this Roche, which is actually oh, up. They, yeah, they're gonna be out of position to fight for this. There's like, no wards. If they have, yeah, if they had smoke for the bottom lane, they would have been able to contest this, but now they're going to give away Roche for free. They're not... They, I guess they're going to get tier Drop 1 mid, stick. but Drop I know stick. that's not the trade we want to make at this point. So, Roshan going down no problem, and Yawar is going to be able to pick this one up. There's also a DD rune. What a timely spot on that. Yawar is going to be able to pick that one up and go look to fight. Just just run at them. Run at them and press Omni Slash. Oh, if he gets a good Omni off, that's going to hurt a lot. So, at the secret shop, still, wheel stand, and they, they've been lingering around for a very long time. And look at those circles coming out on the map, too, from uh, Ryoza. He knows. He knows they're there. Yeah, they saw they saw them with the ward, and with that knowledge, they can just push in bottom. Because they know, okay, they at least all have to TP back, you know? So... Woo! Well, 900 crits. Damn. Yeah, they, they're gonna push in with this. They have, they <laughs> have Manta Salah, they have... Yeah, oh god. Honestly, disgusting. So, what do we got? What do we got? Here it comes. They drop themselves. A little bit of damage. A little bit of dots coming in from the axe. You are taking time to get this one out here. Getting slowed up, though. He's got to be careful. Medusa's starting to hit him for a little bit of damage. Going to have to drop the ward, and even with Aegis, they have to really be mindful of getting called and cold. But, I mean, even if it gets called, you can swap him out, you know. Um, they have good counter initiation with the puck as well, so I think Yawar is just, you know, he feels comfortable. Like, next creep wave, he's just gonna hit the tower again, pop the med style maybe even. So. 
I think Ehawk is in a really good position to take this tower. Ooh, nice oh, nice swap. They get the Doom out too. Sleasel not gonna find a stun. They get the coil on the Sleasel. He's trying to fight this one up. Yawar, he's still beating people down. Mega kill, double kill for him. They go in. Infinity finds himself one, taking down Derp Derp, and uh, this might be it for game one. Agni getting forced back, still doomed up. Fanasoyan on a three-man echo, looking for a kill on a rise up, but he can't get it. Stun comes in, he's dead. Buyback forced out of Sleasel. He doesn't get the blink before the crush. Oh no, Ryo's is gonna be the one casualty. Agni chasing down, slowing them down with that. Glim oh, nice little shift. Comes in from the puck. He'll be able to blink. They chase him down, though. And he gets stunned. He's dead. Racks don't die. One buyback is enough to actually keep them alive. I'm surprised that Sleasel didn't buyback earlier. He could have, actually. I guess he was waiting for the Axe to have buyback as well. I don't know, but um, it was a good defense. Like Even though it cost him two buybacks, I guess they prevented the Racks. Um, they didn't even get the Aegis, but Ehak was very reluctant to to fight into that. Oh, you are. He's gonna get find himself a kill and tranquil boots as well. Oh, this oh. could be huge. Tranquils, do it. He didn't go for the tranquils yet. He goes for Talera. Talera picks up his boots, and he's dead. Look at those crits. Crits on crits on crits. I think he definitely had enough time to go for the tranquils first. He did, but he chose not to. So. Yeah, like he even could have hit Axe first to prevent him from blinking, and then hit the boots. Like that's how much time he had, but. I don't know. Like I guess he was he was just focused on getting the kill, trying to play it very calm and collected, not give him any room for error or something. So, yeah. Yep. Exposed racks down bot. Derp derp. Oh, caught from the high ground. Here it comes. Trying to glimpse him back. He uses the mantis. The illusions are enough to pick up the rest of the kill. He can't be finding solo kills like this, man. He's way too strong already. And Yawar has another 5k sitting in his bank. Like he's. I don't know what he's even gonna go for at this point, but abyssal. Yeah, probably. Probably just an abyssal and, you know, oh yeah, there it is, the basher. And Agni disconnects. Ah, look at the map. It's, like, they have two wards out, but they're pretty useless, honestly. Uh, wheel, that is. Like, they have two wards in the mid lane, but they're not really like, giving away too much information. Yeah, they would kind of hope that there would be a ward in the uh, Radiant side jungle, but unfortunately, they couldn't find it. Fan favorite, what do we got? Rapiers purchased in 6.83, Pro Dota equal 44. Medusa Rapiers are 25 in 6.83, huh. All right, so she's picked up over half of the Rapiers in these games. Will she have enough though? She's got a long way to go. Has to decide between her Manta or a Rapier. The thing is, can does she even have enough time to go for a Rapier? Like, she doesn't even, like, she, I guess has half of it, but is it gonna be enough? Like. Because the next push is coming in now, right? Um, they're gonna make most of this Aegis, which is gonna run out in like, what? It's got one a little and bit. Half minutes. It's got a while. Yeah. So, uh, I think they want to make this count. I'm gonna go push in. They do have everything up if they want to. So, yeah. Look at this. Like Axe and Disruptor is still dead for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So, might as well push in and try to squeeze out as much as he can. All the right. tower is down after all already. Yeah, this this should be no problem for Yuar, especially with the backup of his team and Aegis. Alright, where are you gonna go, Yuar? He's got his mats up, he's got his mask, and it's only a soul Earthshaker to hold him off. Everybody else is outside the base. Sleasel's off split pushing, Agni's farming up the jungle. And he's saving up. Probably gonna be going for that rapier. But look at this Rax, it's just getting destroyed. Absolutely melted right now. Talera's there, and he can't do anything. There's no glyph or anything, so. That's going to be one set of racks going down for Yawar. Oh, blink, no. Well, they're in a really bad position to fight, especially with Agni not being in the base at all, you know. Um, I think it was good to not just TP back for, for that for oh. Rex. Oh, Sleasel. He's caught outside the base. That is a horrible situation. He's dead. Finger down. There's the uh, Doom going out to Agni as well. They're trying to fight this one in. Phantasoyan jumps in with his blink. Gets Yules. Gets Silence. He's dead. Yawar still going big in the back line. He's 1v3. He takes down one of them. He's going for Talera now. Trying to find Agni. They get the Hex out. And uh, he doesn't have Omni, unfortunately, but just chopping away. He decides it's not enough damage. They drain all the mana away from Agni. Infinity flip, uh, turns around as well from the Stone Gaze and... It looks like this one might be done. Axe goes down as well, and that's going to be two sets of racks, and more than likely the game. Yep, yeah. GG called. Oh, Sleasel. Uh, it was a cute play, definitely. Like, he tried to tried to sort of surprise them, I suppose, but um, getting caught out there was just so crucial. And honestly, Ehog just played it super well um, throughout the whole game. I think Infinity, definitely the MVP of this match. Like, 
dictating the pace of the game early on, making sure that this axe doesn't get anything out of the jungle, and uh, yeah, Ehug looking strong, and Wheels a bit disappointing to be honest. Yeah, I thought they would do a little bit better. They had some good uh, opportunities. Agni ending out four and two, so hasn't didn't really get a chance to do too much. And uh, Fanasoyon one and eight, unfortunately, on his uh, Earthshaker. So. We're going to go to a quick break, guys. You can find uh, myself, Skim, and uh, Pax on Twitter, at EGADCast, at Skim Gaming, and uh, at Mott Pax. So we'll see you guys for game uh, number two between Ehug and Wheel Wreck While Whistling here for uh, Season 12 of Starladder. <laughs> 